Hello, You're doing the um intro and stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's just a quick, it's just a short little, it's just a short little intro about yeah, Dr. Dr. Bass, uh, before hopping into her her session. It'll be mainly her taking the floor, and I'll I'll manage the Q and A as well. Okay. But yeah, would you mind um yeah, would you mind sharing the slide deck for the uh, during the session? Yeah. And I think uh, Monday afternoon, uh, Lee should get back to me shortly, but uh, that should work. To you say what? I'm sorry. To oh, me, about the, for the about reference the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew they were going to have something scheduled, but I wanted to try to get them in earlier. Hold on, let me open this slide. Okay. Um, I wanted to try to get them in earlier so they can start working on some stuff earlier than Thursday. Yeah, are they going to get right into, like, lit review? Uh. Jessica's probably going to get started on a lit review, but um, Vivian's going to be working on a project with Brian that'll probably require her to do some. It may not require as much lit review, but um, there may be some on the back end. Hers, I think, is going to be more data on the front end than um, than literature. Hmm. Yeah, they'll be busy. Good. Okay. Let me we test this out. Slideshow. Current slide. I hate this. Hold on. That's why it's always nice to have a little practice session before. Yeah, exactly. Let me um, share my screen. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Which view do you see? Uh, no, that looks great. Yeah. Okay. Is that um? And is there there's a cover slide on there? Did you see that? Not a poll. Oh, this is did you send it back? This is mm -hmm. the version that last version that she sent. So oh, probably yes. Back. Yeah, if you open the one that I just sent back in my email, it says rev underscore final. That that should have it. Now I gotta figure out how to share it. Hold on one second. Because this is my life today. This is no. open. Okay, yeah. Slideshow. One current slide. That's good. That looks great. Okay. All right. Stop share. Okie dokie. Should be a quick, uh, should be a quick and Smooth session. Hi, Dr. Yeah. Bass. Hello. I like the background. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I figured given that I'm in Berkeley, it was appropriate. So, and then you don't have to see the background of my apartment. So, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. How's everybody doing today? We're doing great. Um, yeah. My gosh. Thanks for joining great. us today. Um, we're excited to have uh, a, a slightly different kind of conversational you know, chat with uh, with you. And your perspective is, is going to be really, is really great for this community. So I, I, I saw that you're on the community as well. So um, so that's wonderful. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. And I mean, you know, half an hour is barely enough to scratch the surface. So mm -hmm. that's why, you know, post the slides, feel free. Um, I'll I'll be on the community and, you know, maybe after the webinar, I'll post a, a, an email saying, you know, thanks so much for, for being part of it. If, if you have any questions, please, please don't hesitate to reach out because, um, you know, this is just the start of a conversation if, if people are interested in talking. So, yeah, yeah that'll be great. great. <laughs> and would you, would you mind if, uh, I think I have it set on automatic recording, but is that, uh, is that okay with you? I, I didn't oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, okay, perfect. It, it, it's all good. I even uh, put my cat in the back so he doesn't hop on the computer because we <laughs> don't want getting that on video. 
Yeah, my, my dog is in the other room. Uh, sometimes he's featured in like the background, just like sleeping on the bed, you know, <laughs> next to me. Uh, he's Sweet. a, What kind of dog do you have? he's a labradoodle. Uh, Oh, my goodness. So he's all curly. yeah, he is, <laughs> but he My has, dog was evicted for the day, so I wouldn't oh, have um, his I haven't, pop-ups. I was going to say, I haven't seen a midnight feature in a while. Okay. Midnight's been a daycare every day this week. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of dog is midnight? He's a golden doodle. Oh my goodness. A hyper golden doodle. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> nature of the breed. Any kind of doodles have a little bit of energy in them, just slightly. Yeah. Mine is just now three years old and he it's it's he's uh he's slowing down or he's uh slowing down in a good way. He's maturing it into adulthood. Uh, <laughs> I think now. He's less crazy. Uh so, nice. so, you give me hope. <laughs> there's hope, there's hope, Mishika. They do have a lot of energy, but they're fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my cat's a, a rag doll and they're they're a very fluffy breed. They're known as the dog of cats because they're so personable. And I even take them out on 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 walks on leashes on on a leash. Really? You know, just, just around the apartment complex, just around the, you know, the, the backyard area. I don't take him out into the park or anything, but but he does um, like his 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 walks. That's so nice. Oh, it's yeah. really it's hilarious. Yes, he he sniffs at the other cats that are in the backyard and they just kind of look at him like, dude, you are such a sellout. <laughs> no, I can walk for you. You're you're you've been domesticated a little too much there. <laughs> Here, let me get my charger. Um, I think my computer's fine, but just I don't want it to suddenly die. Uh <laughs> yep, yep, and I am gonna bring up just in case there are questions that I can't immediately answer uh on the slides. I'm bringing up the uh the JSO website so I can look at information there, but but yeah, um, I think we should be good. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, take your time. Did we ask you about any links you want us to share in the chat besides the link to the journal's website? I think that's enough. Yeah, okay. That, okay. that's the main. Yeah, that that's the one that has all the the pages. And I mean, I suppose you could, if people really wanted details, you could show them the. Um, you could show them the four authors page. I'll put that in the chat. I mean, that's a okay. Oh, I see that. Okay. Yeah, I see that, it. You know, yeah, that one's off the website, but you know, I think it really is just. Just having a conversation. I, I just encourage him to check out the website, take a look at some of the articles. You know, that's that's the best way to see if you're, you know, and and, and email us if, if they have any questions about whether something's a good fit or or what would, you know, we're happy to to chat with folks before they submit. So. Yeah, I was reading more. I was reading your slides. I, I love um, yeah, this I mean it's a really great, I think, approachable journal for a lot of folks like um who, yeah, who just don't know, who maybe are not less familiar with the process. And I love that you all provide, yeah. you know, a, a, quite a quite a lot of support, you know, for folks. We try, we try. Yeah, I mean, my, my biggest advice, and I put that first slide in about, you know, what what story do you want to tell? And that's, that's advice that if they take nothing else away from this conversation, you know, write the kind of paper that you would like to read. Um, you know, and and we're kind of that journal that that writes all these papers about how to put together programs, how to study the impact. It's mm -hmm. you know that that can really have a you know I like to have at the end of, of articles like recommendations. If I was doing this again, or here are some lessons that I learned, and um, you know, hopefully they'll be beneficial to other people. Oh, definitely. You know, it's a very like practical, kind of tangible, um, and it looks like quite a lot of case studies. Like very. It, you know, articles that people can pick up and use. Um, which that, is that, that's kind of what that's kind of yeah. what we're hoping. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there definitely is work, you know, collectively, this work can contribute to the greater body of research on STEM education. And it can be very practical at the same time. So we kind of want to we, we want to achieve both goals. Blended both is always great. Well, thanks. Well, yes. we're, we're excited. We're excited. Yeah. And this is going to be a, an ongoing series then. Um, do you have other other uh, journals lined up or? We have uh, our, some colleagues are connected to 
NAMI, the National Association, the National of, Association of Minority Medical Educators. Oh my goodness, they have, they have a journal uh, in health professions diversity. Oh, so nice. uh, we're we're uh, kind of aiming to have that slated for early July. So in about a month. Oh, fantastic! A similar style journey. Yay! Yeah, I also wonder if the um the um cell biology education, life sciences education. I wonder if they would be willing, or if that would. I mean, they do mostly work. You know, they they've done more work with um with undergrad and graduate populations. Mm -hmm. But that's sometimes where we send people if, if if you really want to write a paper on the impact of say you know a mentoring program mm -hmm. or a near peer mentoring program on on graduate trainees or on undergraduate trainees that's that's where I would send people. Um, yeah, and the yeah. Journal of Cell Biology Education. Yeah, CBE LSE is is the shorthand, and it's Life Sci Ed, either dot com or dot org. I think they're a nonprofit, so I think it's a dot org. Yeah. Thank when you. We have time. I will. Lifesciad.org. I was right. Wonderful. All right. I'll check. I'll check that out. Um, yeah. yeah. This is. I'll, uh, I'll check out Nami too. I. I... Right. And we're all set to start at the at the bottom of the hour, one thirty. Okay. Does that work for for you both? That's good with me. And Mashika will will help us in sharing slides. I'll open the the session, uh, Kristen, and yeah. and then hand it over to you after maybe the two okay. minute mark. Yeah, and we'll just we'll just go ahead and get started. Like we said, I mean, thirty minutes will fly by. So, exactly. Um, and I have a couple of seed questions. I didn't see anything come up uh, yet. Um, neither did I so. in the chat, but uh, okay. you know, but folks will have questions, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. That sounds great. That looks that looks good, Nishika. Thanks for sharing. I want to test the slide for a second. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I could move you from the screen. Okay, right, going back on me. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, and uh -oh. I'm turning my camera off too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it like the fall summer right now, uh, Kristen in Berkeley? I know that the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. It tends to be a little cloudier on this time of the year, right? It's it's yeah. I mean, we're expecting a heat wave. My heat wave, we're expecting like I don't know what it's going to be in Berkeley. It's going to be seventy five in Berkeley. So that's mm. that's not quite a heat wave, but that's still that's still warm for us. So it's like eighties are just like, and I and I know like you know living on the East Coast, it's like oh eighties are are just the norm. <laughs> so but, uh, yeah, or, or yeah, eighties nineties. I'm I'll, I'm about to get ready to head to DC later tonight, and uh, looking oh. forward. To that. I'm actually on your time zone today. Um, oh, I'm in, I'm, I'm whereabouts in, are you? I'm in uh, Los Angeles right now with uh, okay. with, with family. Oh, lovely, lovely. So you, you you know the Bay Area a little bit then if you're you're from the definitely yeah. I went LA to school. Area. I went to school at UC Davis in NorCal and oh, made nice. plenty made plenty of trips to the Bay. Um, sure, sure. No, well, it's a great place to be. I mean, I've it'll be twenty years this July since I moved out here, and mm. you know, come back to California, and I kind of said, yeah, I I can live here. Yeah, it's you know? it's not too bad. <laughs> not too bad, you know. Rent control that that is also a big thing, but you know. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> the housing I, yeah. prices—it's nuts. That's a part of it. I just—I'm like, if, if I move back, I need to. I need to. Uh, yes, and I, I would want to <laughs> be comfortable, um, if I can. Uh, oh my gosh! I yeah. All right, so we're getting started here in just a moment. All righty, love people it. Trickle in, okay. All right, I'll start webinar, and people will trickle in uh, yep. over the next. And then just soon. yep, just just let me know, and I'll I'll start going through my slides and. You know, but really it is more of a conversation. It's, you know, we'll go through the slides, but if I don't get through all the slides, I'm not going to, you know, just, we'll be casual about it. Perfect. Right, people are starting to, to hop in here. Let me just send a message to our colleague to, uh, to make sure everybody's on the Zoom link. All right, people are starting to come in here. We'll, we're at the bottom of the hour, so I can go ahead and get started. 
Hello, Let's everyone. Thank you for joining us. The Association of American Medical Colleges is pleased to welcome you to today's community conversation, chat with the editor's journal STEM Outreach. My name is Adrian Barrios. I am the Workforce Transformation Program Specialist here at the AMC, and it's my pleasure to welcome you and open today's discussion. Please note that we muted all participant audio upon entry. If you do need assistance, please uh, just send me a message directly, and, and I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, this presentation will last up to 30 minutes and will include uh, plenty of time for Q&A at the end. You may submit a question at any time by clicking that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen right there. And we're delighted to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Kristen Bass, Director of Research Development at Rockman et al. Cooperative. Dr. Bass, Dr. Bass brings a wealth of experience in teaching and educational research, uh, specializes in K-12 STEM education, and is actively involved in evaluations for the National Institutes of Health Science Education Partnership Award Program, as well as uh, projects within the National Science uh, Foundation's Education and Human Resource Human Resources Directorate, uh, quite a mouthful, and Kristen serves as a also serves as a co-editor for the Journal of STEM Outreach, making her perspective and her voice uh, truly such a great fit for this community. This conversation was brought to you in response to your feedback, which made evident a shared desire for enhanced learning and development in various aspects of the research. Uh, manuscript development and publication process, you know, and and as such, we're thrilled to facilitate this unique opportunity to uh, to engage and uh, and share knowledge around this topic. Uh, and so many of you are are deeply involved in the STEM outreach and health professions pathway program initiative um, kind of uh, uh, kind of pathway, and so uh, which aligns really well with these goals of the Journal of STEM Outreach and Dr. Bass's background. And so once again, we're so excited to uh, extend our sincerest gratitude to Dr. Bass today for generously sharing her time and expertise with us. Uh, and it's my pleasure now to hand it off over to Dr. Bass. Hey, thank you so much for that very warm welcome, Adrian. And thanks to you and Nishika for your very gracious invitation to speak with you all today. Um, it, really is, uh, it really is a wonderful opportunity and I'm grateful to be part of your community. Um, this is just going to be a, a half hour conversation, but I hope that it's the start of more conversations. I am part of the AAMC online community now, and if you do have questions, um, please feel free during this talk or after this conversation to reach out to me or to reach out to the other editors at the Journal of STEM Outreach. Um, and, and thank you. Thank you for all the work that you are doing to make a difference in the lives of so many students and educators and community members to really strengthen the STEM pathway in the biomedical workforce and just get, get folks interested in STEM. We all know that we need it. Um, so, so thank you for all the work that you do. And, um, you know, my, my time here, I hope will encourage you to not just do all this amazing work that you're doing, but really start to give you the confidence and the resources to share this work with a larger community and to uh, publish it broadly, because that's what JSL is all about. So if we can go ahead to our first slide, please. Um, and um, the Journal of STEM Outreach is a relatively new journal. We've been around since about 2018. Um, it is a, um, it's an all online journal. We don't have paper copies and it's an all open access journal, which um, is very nice. We don't have any paywalls um, and it's, it's pretty much volunteer led as well. So we, we don't really have any paid staff. Um, we just have a lot of people who are passionate about STEM education, STEM K-12 outreach, and, and they're giving their time to, to help uh, spread the word on it. So uh, the next slide, please. And just first, this is a general um, a general slide for any of the coffee chats that you attend, any of the conversations that you have with editors, something to think about regardless of whether you're interested in publishing in, in JSO or, or just you know sharing your work anywhere. Um, the biggest advice I can give is to think about the story that you want to tell, to think about how program developers, researchers, educators, other audiences, could use your program's methods, program results. What do you have? Everyone in this community knows something that others don't and others know something that you don't. So how can we share and learn and grow from each other? Think about the audience that you want to reach, what they might do with the information you share. And also think about the kind of papers that you like to read. Um, it's write the kind of paper that you like to read and you like to share and would benefit you. That's another perspective. So just generally, as you think about your about your, your manuscripts, that's something I would encourage you to do. And now let's go to 
the um, we'll go to some of the details about JSO. So if you could turn to the next slide, please. Um, so JSO, as I mentioned, is an online open access journal, and its goal is to take all the great work that folks are doing in K-12 pathways education, K-12 outreach education, and provide a venue for that to um, publish the results of their work that will be of general interest to those who develop, implement, and conduct research in the field of K-12 STEM outreach. And I intentionally bolded K-12 and underlined it because that's, that's our primary focus. If you are interested or if you have programs that are doing outreach and education with undergraduates or graduate students or medical students of any, at, at any point in the kind of the post-secondary pathway, you know, your work is extraordinary and amazing too. That's not the focus of this journal, but um, there are other journals that, um, that would be, you know, happy to, to take what you have to share. So we definitely focus on more of the K-12 STEM outreach. That's our niche. Okay, and then uh, the next slide, please. Um, just some general guidelines. Um, we do require um, a manuscript cover, cover, cover letter, tables, supporting information. We do everything in um, APA or American Psychological Association format. Um, I do encourage you, if you are interested in submitting, to, to look at those general guidelines and um, and get a sense because um, if you don't follow those, even, you know, especially like the abstract or the manuscript or the cover letter, um, we will return that, um, you know, the papers back to you, not, you know, and just encourage you to resubmit, just, you know, you would resubmit again with your cover letter and with your manuscript in the format, um, the page limits exactly, just like with a, any other kind of submission, we want to keep things fair to everyone. And even though the journal itself is open access, we do charge some publication fees to offset those journal expenses, um, but we can also make exceptions and waive some of those fees in, uh, in cases where this is going to be a hardship. We do want to recoup some of our operating um, expenses, but we don't want this to be a burden on people who have important stories to tell. So next. Um, and I apologize for going through so quickly, but um, this is so we can have some uh, some time for questions, and you can also just ask questions during. But but there are four article types. Um, we have commentaries, which are short, reflective commentaries. Um, we have program descriptions, and um, those are descriptions of your programming without necessarily a lot of extensive um, evidence of the effectiveness of your program. They focus more on the description um, of your program and how it's the preliminary evidence. Case studies, um, they're kind of similar to what you find, might find in a medical journal, some of the case studies where you really zero in on a particular event or experience or maybe a couple of um, you know, um, members of your community that are involved in these programs and talk about them. And then research, which is uh, for studies that have been done on a more longer term around a particular program. Um, they are more rigorous in nature with the instrumentation, with the research, with the results. Um, and at this point, I can go through the commentaries, I can go through one-on-one, -on -one, but, but I'll take a pause here. And based on this initial um, description, are there any immediate questions that anyone has before I go on into greater detail about what these article types are like? Okay. Um, given that there are no questions yet, uh, we'll go ahead and I'll go into some description about the commentaries. Um, I do, as an aside, I do encourage you, again, if you're interested in, um, you know, if you're interested in reading the articles in the journal or, or potentially publishing, definitely one of the first things to do is to read uh, read these articles. Um, find some articles that you might find as models for the kind of stories that you are interested in telling. Find some articles that you like and really speak to you, and you'll get a sense of what, what you might publish and what might be um, a benefit and interest to uh, the JSO community. So the first one is commentaries. These, I won't go into a lot of detail. They're kind of bigger picture um, commentaries. This is one from uh, Bruce Alberts from uh, University of uh, California, San Francisco, who kicked off our inaugural issue with an emphasis on the importance of STEM outreach. Um, we don't publish those as often, but we definitely have a few and you can look at those at your leisure. Um, we can go to the next slide with uh, program descriptions. And as I described, these manuscripts are reports of studies without really strong formal um, analyses of a program, but they do go into a, a 
reasonable amount of detail about the program components, about the rationale for the program, about the way they have formulated partnerships with different community members. Um, and they do have some preliminary evaluation data. And the next slide. Um, these are, here are a couple of articles, some programmatic articles that are from uh, authors in medical colleges, and uh, they, they are particularly doing um, medical outreach, I would say. Um, and I would encourage you to look at a couple of those. Um, like I said, look at, um, look at examples of, of what people have published, and these are a couple that I'd recommend. Um, all the articles are quite good, and these I think would be particularly of interest to, um, to the AMC community. So we'll go on. Um, again, I described uh, case studies, and they are comparable to uh, modeled after case studies that you see in clinical journals. So if you're interested in kind of talking about a particular event or, um, you know, an interaction or a relationship, a partnership that you want to share with others, uh, this is a great way to do that. And uh, the next slide has a couple of examples of those. Um, here's one that is all about uh, science nights and examples of lessons learned through doing some science nights with elementary kids. Um, the Vanderbilt Science uh, Scientist in the Classroom Partnership has been um, another uh, article that, that um, was published early on, and that comes from the good folks out at um, Vanderbilt STEM Outreach. Um, and this also reminds me that uh, at, well, I am the co. I am one of the co-authors, but I do want to give um, full, you know, credit and praise to uh, Virginia Shepherd and Ann Chester, who were the founders of this journal and continue to have amazing leadership on this journal. They've been working on this journal for for several, um, for many years, and this really came from their desire, their their interest in finding venues to publish this work. Uh, the science education journals weren't taking it. The science non-education journals were a little unsure where it would fit. And so they created this unique niche and it's their it's their vision that has um, enabled this journal to thrive as it is. So um, the third type of, uh, the fourth type of article is research articles. And again, as I said, those are a little bit more in depth. They may have more of a, a stronger theoretical perspective or, um, you know, just, doing this work over a longer period of time, um, maybe more rigorous analyses or more um, discussion of the instrumentation and the methods. Um, you can, again, you can look at, I mean, we, we do take um, qualitative and quantitative data approaches. We do take mixed methods as well. So you can take a look at those research articles. Um, and again, if you go to the next slide, we have a couple of articles that are more, um, more in depth and focused on the research. Um, again, these come from uh, some medical colleges, so you can look at those particularly to um, if you're looking for some some models. Um, the article at the top comes from the um, from the University of Alabama in Birmingham, and the um, article on the bottom is I believe that's from UC Irvine, um, University of California Irvine. Uh, they're both excellent pieces, and yeah, go ahead and take a look if you're so interested. Okay. Um, we also publish some special issues, and we, um, for those, we put out a call for papers, we ask for abstracts, we will accept or, um, you know, encourage revisions to the abstracts, and then if you have an abstract accepted, you um, produce the paper, and we go through the editorial process that way. Um, and then also with a special issue, you're marked as being a special issue, and you also get um, a discount on, on the publishing charge. It's usually about half the cost of a normal article. So um, we did work on sustainability and long-term programs that have been sustained over time. We did an article on outreach during the pandemic. The NCI uh, National Cancer Institute uh, Youth Enjoy Science R25 program, we had a special issue for that. And we also recently published some work uh, for programs that are particularly focused on um, youth uh, that have been historically marginalized in STEM careers. Uh, we've got a lot to be proud of with all these amazing stories. Okay, and um, in terms of our analytics, um, we, you know, we have a we have an acceptance rate of seventy percent, and that is that is because I think our journal really likes to encourage um, encourage, you know 
conversations between editors and associate editors and reviewers. We try to give a lot of constructive feedback. We're not one of those that if you don't follow things exactly, we're going to we're going to turn you down. We do like to pride ourselves on being, you know, supportive um, to the extent to which we're able in providing that constructive feedback. And so um, we do, you know, we do have a reasonable um, acceptance rate. We do have, a, um, you know, about 30 days until the first decision. So typically what happens is the article will go to, um, it'll come to the editors. We'll look at it to make sure that it complies with, it's it's got the right, you know, it's a fit to the journal. It complies with all the formatting guidelines, et cetera. Then we send it to an associate editor who sends it to reviewers. And then the associate editor will send it to two or sometimes three reviewers. We'll make a decision and the decision will be, um, most often it will be, um, you know, it'll either be accept, it'll be revised or resubmit, or it'll be reject. And just like most journals, we rarely accept a, an article it, you know, none of us are perfect, especially including myself. So we never accept it um, immediately, but we do provide some constructive feedback and usually it's a revise and resubmit. And then um, that goes through and then we, um, and then it, it'll be accepted or maybe it goes through a second round of revise and resubmit uh, for some more minor things. And then we do formatting checks and then we publish. And this is a rolling journal. So it's not like we have issues. This is published as soon as, as soon as it's ready. It, um, yeah. And that's that's how it works. Oh, we do not have an impact factor yet. Um, some of these articles can be found in PubMed, especially when they're funded by um, by federally funded projects. They will go immediately into PubMed once people announce or once people mention that in their in their annual reports. But we do not have PubMed, nor do we have an impact factor yet. Um, that is something that we hope to accomplish, um, but we are we are working on that. So that's. Um, just in case that's a question that someone has. And this is my last slide. Um, do reach out if you have any questions. Um, you can certainly contact the, the journal more broadly and um, the, you know that's monitored on a regular basis. And if you want to if you want to reach out to me personally, um, there's my email. I am also now a member of the um, AAMC Pathways community so you can feel free to reply to the chat thread or to, um, you know, just just email um, email within the community or email me personally, and I'd be happy to uh, have some conversations with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing the presentation, Dr. Bass. And we are, uh, I'm just going to check the Q&A here for Please. just a moment. We have uh, only roughly 20, 12 minutes for uh, for this session. So, um, so Anyone on the call, you know, we welcome your your thoughts, your questions um, in the Q and A chat um, button. Um, uh, I see a question here. Um, uh, uh, Layla Miri says, "How can we sign up to be a reviewer?" For okay, a, that's so. an excellent question. Yeah, and and it's good. I mean, um, it's always a good experience to get to be a reviewer and get to know um, the journal, and then that can that can give you some ideas of what to submit. Uh, for reviewers, we do um, we do. We have some. We we are looking for reviewers who have some, you know, some some experience with STEM outreach. So not just um, you know graduate students or postdocs who've just come out. You know, we want them to have two or at least two or three years under their belt, um, and perhaps have published some. So if you can send a, um, I mean, you can reach you can contact the Journal of STEM Outreach. That that would um, that would be the best way to do it. Maybe uh, describe a little bit about who you are. If you have a short CV that you could send, um, who you are, what you do, why you, um, you know why you're interested. We're always looking for reviewers. I don't mean to discourage, but we do want to make sure that that um, you know uh, we we do want to know a little bit about you, and we would love to have more uh, more reviewers as well. So so thank you for that question. Thank you. And another question, great. Let's see another one here. As programs develop and have data to share about progress and continued evaluation, what format would you recommend for this work to be published in, or should it be, or should it be published? Hmm. Let me take a look at that question and think about it. We're thinking about because... developing programs. Yeah. You know, I think it's good to have programs whenever you have something to publish at whatever state. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfectly formed program in order to, 
to publish. I don't know if this is answering your question, but you can always do a program description article, for example, maybe in some of the early stages when you've got some preliminary evidence of effectiveness. And then maybe as you're going through, you're saying, oh, wow, there's some other interesting data that, we're, that we'd like to explore. Maybe you're starting about overall effectiveness. Um, wow, kids really seem to be learning from this. And we're really seeing that their ideas of STEM careers are changing. And then later on, you want to write a paper about how they're belonging to a community of practice. Um, you can do both. There, I'm sure there are many stories that can be told from your data. And um, I do encourage you, if you have a program description, I think it's a little bit more than, oh, wow, kids are really interested in this program and kids really find it fun. I know that that you know a lot of hands-on programs, kids find interesting and fun. And we're really looking for some of those broader impacts of you know, are they are they learning? Are they changing their ideas and their attitudes towards STEM or their perception or their feelings of belonging? So if you have some of those those stronger, more lasting impacts, I think that is also something that we encourage. And when in doubt, um, you could always send an abstract to our journals and to our journal editors. We're happy to look at it. We're happy to have a conversation and we can kind of get to know more about you and your program and when or if or how you might be interested in publishing. So... Yeah. Thank you, for that. Thank you for that response. Yeah, do you see the other question? I so, do. Are you interested in learner reports of their experiences in outreach program? Um, I think that would be delightful. And we have often had some kind of thoughts about wanting to do more participatory evaluation and direct learner perspectives. So I would encourage that perhaps as a case study. Um, again, remember our focus is on K-12. Um, maybe if there's you know, if so, if you have some high school students that are interested in publishing, or maybe some um, high school students or students who participate in your programs are now enrolled in college and they're talking about the broader impact of the longer term impact, those would be lovely stories. And getting getting students authentic and unique voices, maybe with some commentary from the program developers as well about um, maybe their perspectives, maybe have some joint back and forth dialogue. Um, again, I'm just workshopping this in my mind as I'm seeing this question. Um, but I would I would love to chat with you more if you're interested in thinking about and and creating a really um, a really strong article. I would definitely encourage that. And I just wanted to make a note here, uh, Dr. Bass, I'll make sure to connect if you're if you're not already connected to this group uh, called yeah. I, IAMSC Community of Growth Core, uh, could be a, a you know a pot potential group to connect for uh, for reviewers for JSO. Uh, oh, is, that's is wonderful. So, I'll, oh, thank you. What'll yeah, the, that's, that's, a, that's a fantastic recommendation. Thank you. And then I'll see, I'll give just a moment. I think um, I, I do have a quick question, just thinking about topics, if I don't see any in the chat just yet. Um, this was this is kind of a straightforward one. You know, as co-editor of JSO, you know, what trends or emerging topics do you foresee shaping kind of, um, yeah, you know, shaping up in, in the kind of the next phases of, of JSO's, you know, of work? Um, mm -hmm. Thinking about like, are there any priority areas that you see that you're you're in discussion with your co-editors around, like that you really want to, you know, think about ways to get them out there. Mm, yeah, that's a really great question, Adrian. And and I'll speak from my experience both as an editor from the Journal of STEM Outreach, and I'm also an active member in the um, NIH Science Education Community, the K-12. We just had our conference in Salt Lake last week, and and it was that community that kind of was the 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 place where JSO was born. And between both those communities, we see we have always had a lot of interest in the broader, more longitudinal impacts of our STEM outreach programs. And we know that that can be very difficult, especially, you know, just kind of a, a visit or two from a scientist in the classroom when you're in elementary school, you know, that's combined with a lot of things to change the trajectory. But if you have programs that you are able to track, um, maybe typically high schoolers into um, what they do beyond um, high school, those kind of articles would be lovely to see. Um, if we don't have as many um, teacher articles, I think, in um, in JSO. And, you know, speaking for myself, maybe not necessarily for other editors, I think some articles on teacher professional development would be of interest. And a broader trend across, um, you know, the science education community, and I saw this uh, very prominently at Syed last week, is the idea of identity and belonging. 
um, we know that these programs, you know, we, we know that we've been isolated the past four or five years. And we know that that young people are coming in longing for connection. And these programs um, at their best can make young people feel like they are not alone, make teachers feel like they are not alone, that they have a place to go, a place to belong, and a place to move forward within, and that science is for them, and that they can contribute meaningfully to the healthcare workforce. So anything on identity and belonging would be, would be lovely. Um, yeah, I think, I think those are, those are a few art, um, articles and trends, but, um, as well, uh, you know, particularly belonging and, um, particularly belonging and culturally relevant and responsive approaches to program development. That's another uh, that's that's another hugely important trend that we're seeing. It's not just a trend. It, it should be in every article. And we often ask, how are you, you know, what are what are young people's lived experiences? What assets do they bring? And how are you incorporating those assets, lived experiences and elements of their community life into your programming? Um, that was something that we emphasized in our special issue. So if you have more ideas of how you are particularly being culturally relevant and responsive, um, more articles like that and using culturally relevant and responsive and equitable evaluation approaches, participatory approaches. Um, we would love to hear more about that as well. Thank you for sharing those perspectives. And uh, and I, I think I see one more question, uh, more from a yeah, from a practical sense of, of how to get kind of submissions uh, approved. You know, what are some common mistakes that you have seen among some submitters? That's, that's a very good question. And one of them, and this goes across journals, is always a matter of fit. So again, um, we are a K-12 focused journal. So if you do have, there are other wonderful places where you can publish articles for post-secondary, um, but we definitely encourage you to, um, to submit your K-12. Um, I would also encourage you again to read these program description articles or program or research articles to get a sense of how much in depth you go into. So sometimes people will produce articles that are they they're light on the program description. They give a you know they give a page or two about that, and then they talk about their evaluation results. And we really want to hear both. So I would encourage you, especially with program description, talk about the elements of your program as if you know, you were helping someone to replicate the program. That's really what a program description is. So having having the right amount of depth for those articles um, and, you know, look at the formatting requirements. I mean, that's not enough to get you immediately rejected, but it is enough for you to stall your proposals. I mean, your, your project or your manuscript. So if your article is too long or it's not in the right format, you know, that'll, we'll, we'll send it back. So uh, because we want to give everybody a fair chance if your article is too long, or you know, even sometimes if it's too short, if it could go into more detail, we will um, we will definitely send it back to you and say, hey, you might want to elaborate on this. Um, those are some common uh, those are some common issues, but you know, little things like oh, I misplaced a quote here, or I didn't have my references fully formatted. We take care of all that later. So just just get your story down. Noted. All right. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for those thoughtful responses to these, you know, these, these set of questions. For anyone that has additional questions, we're going to get ready to wrap up here. Uh, for anyone that has additional questions, you know, we welcome them in the virtual community. I saw a couple of requests come in, so I'll, I'll be sure to approve those shortly. We've recorded today's session and we'll post additional resources, including this recording with uh, the library within the library tab in the AMC uh, Pathway Programs Consortium. Th thank you, Kristen, uh, today. And, and of course, all of today's participants uh, for, for joining us today. You know, please share, you know, for, for many in the audience to, you know, please share additional information in the discussion thread uh, around research and scholarship about any upcoming learning opportunities that are on your ra radar related to research and scholarship. We'd love to, you know, cross share and cross promote as much as we can. Um, and additionally, if you would, we would love for you to consider ways to spread the word about this space, uh, particularly among K-12 STEM educators. You know, this uh, this program in particular is something that we really want to, to demonstrate uh, how this work is cross-sectional, um, you know, cross-disciplinary, and we really want to get some of those voices in the community as well. So thank you for, uh, to, uh, for today's session, uh, Kristen, and uh, we look forward to continuing in the conversation in the community uh, over the next couple of days. Appreciate everyone for joining today. Thanks again. Good luck with all of you with your outreach programs and uh, blessings on you and, and good luck with all, all the work and, and uh, telling your story. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Take care. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Bye.